Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Time Travel. Now in today's episode we're going to be traveling back to the year 1997 and taking a look at another version of Microsoft Plus. And that is a name that some of you guys who have been a long time viewer of this channel probably haven't heard in a little while. Um, I have done videos on so far every version of Microsoft Plus except for two. I've done one on Microsoft Plus 95 which was the very first version plus 98, plus XP, plus Digital Media Edition, and now we're gonna be taking a look at Microsoft Plus for kids. This was a specialized release of Microsoft Plus themed, as you can probably tell, around kids under age 12. It was released in 1997, and it was designed for Microsoft Windows 95, although you could probably run this on a later version of Windows. Obviously, Windows 98 came out in 1998, so you could most likely run it on a newer version of Windows, no problem but we have a Windows 95 VM set up for this video to take a look at this piece of software. So what exactly would you get when you bought Microsoft Plus brand new on the store shelf in 1997? Well, uh, this came with uh, a lot of like programs to kind of entertain young children. So it came with like a paint program, a text to speech program, which we're going to get into, which I think is actually pretty neat. There is a uh, bit of a music making program. There's just a uh, lot of, you know, really uh, neat little like fun programs in here. There's not really much like utility with this program, like with plus 95, which kind of brought new features and, and like abilities to the system. This one obviously is just going to be focused on kind of entertainment, um, but it does include a theme pack and and some fonts, and it also includes one pretty useful utility for parents uh, called Protected, which is basically a set of parental controls, which would definitely be helpful for those parents who are wanting to kind of restrict what programs that uh, kids can open on their computer. So let's just go ahead and uh, jump into this. So we're just going to start with the installation process. We've got the CD already uh, mounted in this VM here, so we're going to install uh, Plus for Kids. You see there were a couple of other options on that uh, auto run menu. We will come back to those in a minute, but I just want to take you guys through the installation process here very briefly. Obviously, it's going to install like uh, you know most other pieces of Microsoft software from this time. There's a point where it asks you for a CD key, and I will also have a link to this down below. You guys can download this along with Plus 95 and 98 from WinWorld, uh, which is a pretty awesome website that I myself use uh, a lot for these videos. So they actually do host this piece of software. It is under the plus 95 category. You have to actually scroll down uh, and you'll see a listing for Microsoft Plus for kids. Um, so we're just going to press OK here. It's going to search for installed components. And you've got two options here. You can kind of go through with the uh, typical installation, which is just going to install the most commonly used features. But we're going to go with a custom install so we can actually customize this and I can show you guys in detail what it actually comes with. And this right here is the list of all of the programs that this setup wizard is going to install. So you have Play It, which is the kind of music making program. You have Paint It, which is the kids themed version of Microsoft Paint, and a picture picker program that goes with that. Uh, Talk It is the uh, uh, text to speech program. Protect It is the parental controls. And then you have, of course, desktop themes and fonts. And for the desktop themes and fonts, you can actually click on these and choose uh, Change Option. If you only wanted to install a specific specific set of themes. Maybe you don't want all of these and you only want a couple. There are a total of 10 themes and 18 fonts that you can choose from. Obviously, we're not going to really worry about that because we have so much uh, space available on this hard drive that uh, the installer doesn't even know how to uh, properly display it because it is uh, such a large amount of space. So we're just going to install everything. And there will be a point in this setup that it will actually ask you to insert the Windows 95 CD-ROM. And that should be coming up any moment here. Uh, so so if you were doing this on like a physical machine running Windows 95, you would need to have the uh, install disk for Windows 95 handy uh, because the setup program will ask for it. And this is that uh, moment right here. So we're going to go ahead and insert the Windows 95 CD-ROM. All right, so we're almost done with the installation right here. And this is, it's actually going to come up with two prompts. The first one is for Protected. And it's basically asking you if you want to configure Protected, which is the parental controls program right now. We're going to say no. And it does the same thing for desktop themes. It, it will ask you if you want to select the theme. Now, we'll just say no because the system actually has to restart. So we're going to click on Restart Windows and let it do that. All 
All right, so we're back here on our Windows 95 desktop, and let's actually go into the Start menu and into Programs and actually look at what uh, the Setup Wizard has installed. So right here, you've got the Microsoft Kids folder, and inside of this are all of your different programs. So we're gonna start out with the Desktop Themes and just kind of go down the list. So let's open up Desktop Themes. Now this, for the most part, is pretty identical to how the uh, Desktop Theme Switcher functioned in Plus. Uh, 98 uh, because plus 98 did have a, a theme switcher and actually there were four themes from plus for kids because remember this actually predates plus 98 uh, there were four themes that's the underwater the jungle the space theme and the baseball theme actually made their way over to plus 98 so Microsoft kind of reused some of those themes um, because most of these in here were kind of themed around kids uh, and they were themed to kind of appeal to kids um, so things like the messy room you've got like a jungle theme um, up here we can go to that one uh, there is an underwater theme which this was one of the ones that made it over to plus 98 so kind of the ones that made it over to to plus 98 are the ones that are not really specifically themed for children um, although some of these you could probably argue are not really specifically themed for children like I mean horses is not going to be specifically themed. Uh, this one here, this Reman, is, is, is probably themed specifically for children. So we can go ahead and apply. Let's just choose this one here. And you can also choose, um, you know, if you wanted like this theme to apply without the screen saver or the sound effects, because all of these themes do have sound effects, as you will begin to notice throughout this video. So we've got this one applied right here. So when I hit OK, there's, there's one of the sound effects right there. It's a pretty long sound effect. And so yeah, everything from right clicking on the desktop, opening up, you know, properties menus, going into the start menu, they all have sound effects. Now, I'm going to turn this down for you guys in the uh, editing process of this video because they are uh, playing back pretty loudly. And all of the themes do this. So, for example, if we want to go back in here, go into desktop themes, and if we want to change this to, let's say, the baseball theme, we can hit OK. And you'll can see that the uh, desktop wallpaper changes, the sounds will change. Uh, these are not as obnoxious as that other one. It's a much shorter sound, so you can hear that there. Um, we can go into the start menu. So yeah, this sound effect that, that this theme uses is not as obnoxious as that other one. But that, that right there, what you just heard, is very obnoxious. You'll have every couple of minutes, a guy will just yell, play ball, like that. And it is like, I, I don't understand what they were thinking. Like, it's, it's, it's literally like, there's nothing you do on the system that causes that. It just like plays every couple of minutes like you can be sitting like with nothing open not moving your mouse like I am right now and you hear he just said play ball and there's multiple themes do that I think all of them might actually but uh, I just find this one like I don't know I, I, I just find it very strange how they just kind of have that like play without really doing anything. Paint it is basically a kids themed version of Microsoft Paint. I'm sure we've all used Microsoft Paint before, but this program also reminds me in a couple of ways to another piece of software called KidPix, which was another kids themed uh, paint program that actually predates this. So it's basically a paint program, but there are a lot of sound effects and additional uh, you know, features that this program has that the regular paint program does not have. So with sound effects, like everything in this program, you're, you're, you're going to notice that, that pretty much all of these programs have some sort of sound effects, which is obviously themed, you know, to kind of entertain uh, kids. But in the case of this paint program, they are basically really short sound effects that are looped like back to back over and over again. So with this pencil tool, as I like draw with it, you can hear that the sound effect is like probably like a two second sound effect that's just playing back to back. Also, this happens even if I'm like, all I have to do to, to trigger that sound effect is press and hold down the mouse button. So I can do this and literally not move like the pencil at all. And you can see that the sound effect will still play. So it doesn't actually depend on you like having to actually, you know, draw. So yeah, each of these tools when you hover over them also have like, if you hover over them long freeform enough, selector. it will play Select a- freeform around the part of the picture you want to move copy or edit have a, a voice come on that'll say okay this is what it is eraser you can erase things I mean that's basically what it does so if I want to go with the bucket tool here let's say we want to make a blue background um, we can go to the uh, like square drawing tool and uh, this right here like this sound effect oh let me actually put it in like a white color here I mean the sound effects are actually pretty neat but it's just the fact that they're basically like 
Yeah, I mean, you can hear they're, they're just looped back to back. Obviously, like, kids are, are probably not gonna really care. Um, but it's just something that I'm, you know, kind of noticing. So yeah, you can kind of draw shapes, you can draw circles if you want to. And yes, each of them have, you know, different sound effects for, like, each one. And this tool right here, this, like, blender tool, is what kind of made me think of KidPix, because KidPix had a very similar feature uh, to this tool, where you could basically distort the entire image just by clicking on it with this tool. And you can see that it kind of starts to distort the image. Uh, you can do things like, uh, basically give it, like, a... You're looking down on, like, a city look with, like, a bunch of skyscrapers, so you can do that. Um, yeah, there's lots of various things that, that you can do, and it honestly can get pretty creative. This bomb tool right here basically destroys everything, and huge seizure warning, by the way, because this is, it's very, very, like, bright and, you know, flashing colors. But, yeah, so it just does this, and, uh, I think it's just, like, the way it's displaying in the, uh, VM, it just kind of looks really, really, uh, you know, screwed up, but yeah, that's how that looks, and it basically is, when you click it, acts like a giant eraser that just destroys everything. Now, the Paint It program also comes with a, a, a program that works in conjunction with it called the Picture Picker, and this program basically contains a bunch of different images, they're all vector images with, like, transparent backgrounds, um, and you can select one of these, click on Copy, and then you can click on the Paste button, or just press Control v in the paint program to actually paste the image so yeah basically it just gives you a, a little bit of extra functionality to kind of pick up you know from all those different images to use in your projects that you're creating with the paint program um, next up is play it and this is the music making program that i was talking about before when you first launch it it asks you if you want it to uh, help you set up your sound card or any midi instruments that you might have basically what it is is you have a keyboard here um, a lot of the uh, uh, keys here are actually tied to various keys on your keyboard so uh, you know you can uh, play music that way it allows you to really customize the style so you can change like if you wanted like a more jazz style um, you can kind of see that the uh, notes kind of change there uh, you have a lot of uh, you know customizable options in here you can change um, the band over here you can uh, customize these volume sliders individually you can even record if you want to so like I can press this record button right here and then I can you know start uh, playing notes I can hit stop and then I can play the recording and it will actually play it back to me so yeah pretty cool now if you wanted to save the uh, song file that you just made you, you can do that um, and there are also some sample songs in here that we can open up so let's say we want to open up uh, this demo song right here, we can click on open, and it's going to ask us, since we actually, like, made that song, like the song that we just made and didn't save it, it's going to come up and say, do you want to save it? We'll just say no. And now we're loading up the demo song. So you can click on play here, and actually, uh, you know, have the song play back. Moving on, let's open up the uh, folder once again, and let's take a look at, so this is the README file right here. We're gonna actually save Protect It for last. We're gonna move on to Talk It. Um, this right here is actually the text-to-speech program. So this is kind of just a like fun program. Um, and what you do is you basically type in a phrase so we can say hello, and you can pick a personality. So you've got multiple different personalities up here. You can individually change the pitch and the speed of the uh, playback, and you can change the pitch quality and add a vocal effect and even uh, playback uh, a sentence in Spanish if you had typed out a uh, sentence in Spanish here. So we can press talk hello. it. And so there is the man voice saying hello. hello. So like for big robot here, if we click on that, you see that it changes the pitch to 66, the speed to 138, and the quality to monotone. Hello. So Hello. And it kind of gives it a bit of a, a robotic effect, which is cool. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. So yeah, I just actually typed out my intro here and, you know, had it uh, read it back to me. So next up is actually a piece of software that provides some functionality for the parents that actually kind of want to uh, control what programs that their children can open on their computer, and that is called Protect It. So Protect It right here, when you first launch it, it'll come up and tell you that it has changed the logon process for your system. So it actually wants you to restart Windows. So we can go ahead and click on Yes. Okay, so we've logged back in here. Now we can actually go and open up Protect It. Uh, once again, and this time you're going to be presented with this little wizard right here And it just kind of tells you very briefly what the program is so it says protect it provides Windows 95 desktop security and Internet security while allowing each family member to access different programs so 
you first have to agree to the license agreement and then you have to type in a uh, key so we can just type in mjd here just for you know this uh, demo and we'll press next so that is the the key that you're going to actually use um to log into this program to change settings. So what it does is it kind of lets you know that for any new users that are not specifically defined in this pr uh, program, it will give them the uh, default user settings. So you have to click on OK. So for the default user, this is for every user unless you specify them individually in the program. So it has right up here, it says do not allow default and then you can choose to use the modem so you can disable modem access. You can uh, not allow the user to open up items other than those on the desktop or in the start menu. So if you wanted to prevent people from going into Windows Explorer and maybe accessing some files through that, uh, you can disable that. And then you can also disable the uh, ability to change computer settings. So we're not actually going to modify anything for the default user right now because um, we're going to actually add a new user account so that we can kind of uh, restrict it. And uh, I can kind of show you how that works. So to add a new family Family member and set restrictions you have to actually do it from the program here since Windows 95 natively doesn't really support that so we can click on add here and now what you do is type in a family member's name so we'll just call this demo and you see what it will do here is it'll say the family member must type this name to log on to Windows so this is what it was saying before when it uh, asked us to restart the computer because it had to um, modify like the way that you log into Windows. It was talking about this because it basically allows you to specify a name here which you can then specify in the login prompt to actually log into Windows. So we're going to just type in uh, the name demo here and now we're gonna get the same uh, screen that we got before. So let's say we wanna really restrict this user. So let's say we don't wanna allow them to use the modem. We don't wanna allow them to open items other than on the desktop or start menu. And we don't wanna have them change computer settings. So we can click on next. And this next screen enables you to uh, specify individual programs that you want to allow the user to open. So we can click on limit this family member to programs selected by the owner below. And then you can even restrict them from running MS-DOS programs. So what we can do is, so right now it's got all these programs in the allowed programs box. So we can move them all over to other programs. And then we can individually specify the programs we want to allow. So let's say that we want to make this user's life really interesting and only allow them to open Microsoft Bob. So we can click on that and now it's going to move Microsoft Bob over to the allowed programs we can click on next and now it's going to give you a summary of what restrictions it's going to add to the user so we can click on finish and now when we close out of it we get this message right here that says congratulations you have just finished setting up protect it so it asks us to actually close all programs and log on again so we can click on OK and actually log out and now all we have to do is type in the word demo in the username and log in and now it's going to ask you if you want to set a Windows password we'll just say no And now you can see that it's actually tried to load presumably the like welcome uh, window that Windows 95 usually uh, loads up with, you know, for the first time. Um, and it actually comes up with a, a restrictions uh, message here saying that the operation has been canceled due to restrictions in effect on this computer. Please contact your system administrator. And it's done the same thing. It's tried to load an MS-DOS prompt and it's come up with the exact same thing. So we'll go ahead and press OK. So now we're not going to be able to load anything except for Microsoft Bob. So if we go to Opera here, it's going to say that you can't run this. We can go into the start menu, but you see the only program we have in here is Microsoft Bob. That's the only thing we can launch. So yeah, this is going to make this user's life uh, really, really interesting. So we can launch Microsoft Bob, but it is trying to load the MS-DOS prompt in the background again. And it's saying that, uh, that we can't do that. So we'll just exit out of Bob here. So yeah, this is kind of a really useful piece of software for you know parents who really wanted to restrict what programs their kids uh, had access to. All right, so I went ahead and logged back into the administrator account here, and you can see that we've taken a look at all of the uh, programs inside of the Microsoft Plus for Kids menu here. Um, but that is not all that uh, Microsoft Plus for Kids had to offer, because if we go back into our uh, auto run, you know, CD menu right here, you see we've got a couple of options aside from install Plus for Kids. Uh, we do have an option to install Internet Explorer 3.01. We already have version 5 on this computer so we're not going to really bother doing that but the option was here for you but we also have this option in the middle right here called fun stuff and you can see it says learn more about other software from microsoft install the surf watch trial version or set up links to microsoft websites for kids 
So in here, we've got three options. We can run demos, install web links, and install Surfwatch. Install web links, basically when you click this, and this just creates a couple of shortcuts to some websites uh, on your desktop that are non-existent anymore, um, but they obviously were at the time. Surfwatch is actually very interesting. This is uh, very similar to the protected piece of software that we just took a look at, but this actually allows you to restrict um, accessing certain sites on your web browser. Now this comes with a 15 day trial. This was a paid piece of software. Also under the demos folder right here, this actually launches a uh, bit of like an interactive sampler program. Of games and educational software. So most of this stuff in here is really just going to be information kind of letting you know about some of the other programs that I assume Microsoft recommended for children to use in addition to Plus for Kids. So if I go under the educational uh, section, for example, you see we've got Microsoft Oceans and Carta 97, World Atlas and, and Carta 97 and Encyclopedia. These are basically just videos that will play and you can see that it actually launches from within the demo sampler so it doesn't actually install anything on your system. So that's basically one of the, one of the major focuses of this uh, sampler program here. Now going back to the main menu and going under the creativity section of this sampler program, these are actual program demos that you can install and use on your computer and you don't actually have to be running the kids sampler to get access to them. So we've installed all of these. We have the Nickelodeon 3D Movie Maker, Microsoft 3D Movie Maker, both of those are uh, kind of similar, and then we have Microsoft Creative Writer 2. So we're going to start off with the regular 3D Movie Maker and this is a Microsoft Microsoft Home piece of software. Uh, Microsoft Bob was also a Microsoft Home piece of software. And basically what you can do here is create a uh, 3D movie. So it kind of gives you some information about what you can do with the piece of software. And then it just kind of says, okay, you have to pick a scene. So there's only one scene in this uh, demo version. So what you can do with this program is essentially create uh, different scenes and kind of create a little movie out of it. Uh, now, again, this piece of software is themed for children. So it's not going to be like Adobe Premiere Pro or anything like that. I mean, it's basically just like a program for kind of kids to experiment with their creativity. Um, so we can kind of add actors up here. So you've got a couple of actors to choose from. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more in the full version, but you can see I, I, I have full control of kind of where I want this guy to be so we can place him there. You can choose if you want him to be walking. You can kind of change uh, kind of how he actually behaves. You do the same thing with this other actor here. You can place her maybe like in the street here uh, and then you can kind of advance frames and you can just kind of frame by frame move each of these uh, characters around and create a little bit of a movie. You can also add sounds. Um, you can also add words as well. So if I wanted like, to type out something, I could do that maybe like right here. So that's like basically what you can do with this piece of software. I'm not really going to go through the entire thing because it, I could literally probably do an entire video on that because I do want to actually show you guys some of the other stuff. Now, the Nickelodeon 3D Movie Maker is obviously going to be very, very similar to the one that we just took a look at. This is still, as you could see up there, it says Microsoft Nickelodeon 3D Movie Maker. So basically what you've got here is a Nickelodeon themed version of the program that we just took a look at. So we can go up here, we can create scenes. You see, we actually have access to, uh, or no, well, we, we, we can actually see what the other scenes are, but we've only got access to one of them. Um, and what you can do is go under actors and props and all the actors that you have now are going to be themed after Nickelodeon characters. So instead of the kind of generic uh, characters that we had in the previous program, uh, you have access to actual Nickelodeon characters and you basically can do the exact same thing. You can go frame by frame. We've got your frame selector down here. You can move these characters around. You can go up to this words area and add a little text box if you want to. Both of these programs from what I can tell are, are very, very similar. They just have a different interface and different characters to actually interact with. So that is the Nickelodeon 3D Movie Maker. Again, very briefly, we'll go ahead and quit out of that. You see, we even have the same like exiting dialog boxes here. And last but not least, we have the uh, Creative Writer 2 trial version right here. And that actually lets me know that it needs a printer, which uh, is it actually gonna let us use the program? Oh wow, it actually will not let us use the program until we add a printer, so. All right, so I went ahead and actually added a printer. I just went with the first um, option that was available, which funnily enough is the Apple Laser Writer because obviously the list was alphabetized. And now you can see that Creative Writer actually opens up and it lets you know some information about the program, but it does kind of let you know down here that it says this is only a demo. We hope to show you what Creative Writer 2 is like, but we had to remove a lot of the cool stuff in this trial version and you can't save your work. 
but you can still make and print simple documents. So you basically could only use this to print documents uh, in this like trial version here. So you couldn't actually save anything, which is actually like kind of a huge downside for a like word processor. So you basically had to like write whatever you wanted to write in like one sitting and then print it. Now, obviously, as I said before, like this isn't Microsoft Word, so you're not going to be writing like you know resumes and like essays in here. I mean, this is just themed around kids once again. So when you click OK on that message, what it will actually do is come up with this new project window, and it kind of gives you some options of kind of what document you want to create. We're just going to go with a a blank page for you know these demo purposes here so it does obviously function uh, like a regular word processor but there's just a lot of uh, theming done to it to make it kind of easier for kids to use so instead of having like actual menu options up here that kind of with like words that kind of tell you what each of the options do you have icons so this icon right here represents the font this one right here represents the size this one represents the style if you want regular italic bold or underlined um, this one here is going to be the color of the actual uh, text. This one here is going to be the highlighter color. So yeah, to give you guys like the gist of it, it's basically a uh, customized version of, I mean, you could probably say Microsoft Word, uh, but just really slimmed down and themed for children to use to make it more interesting and, you know, like it says, it's called a creative writer, so it kind of uh, gives you some more options to kind of be creative in uh, the documents that you create. But again, you can't actually save anything. So when you close out of this, it just basically says, thanks, Creative Writer 2 makes creative writing fun and easy by combining the best features of a word processor with really cool creativity and online publishing tools. And for a limited time, when you acquire Creative Writer 2 plus 3D Movie Maker or Nickelodeon 3D Movie Maker, you'll receive an inbox rebate offer of $10 US or $15 Canadian. Um, so I don't believe we can actually purchase this anymore. There's not like a, I was actually wondering if, uh, you know, when I saw like the uh, $10 figure, when I was just kind of glancing over it, I thought that they might have like an address for you to send $10 to and then them actually send you this program, but it's just the actual rebate offer. So we'd have to actually go online to the website to actually get information on how to uh, purchase it. But uh, that is basically it guys for Microsoft Plus for kids. Again, just a uh, specialized version of Microsoft Plus that was themed specifically at children by kind of giving you a lot of you know, fun programs to work with some, you know, creative tools as we just saw. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times per week on this channel. And as always, if you guys have any suggestions or comments for me, be sure to leave those down below as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.